Hello and welcome to Basic Medical Sciences. If this is your first time, please make sure you subscribe so that you won't miss any of our latest videos. In today's video, we're going to talk about Helicobacter pylori or H. pylori, right? Okay, here you go, H. pylori. All right, so this is the basic classification of our gram-negative cafeteroids, right? All of them are oxidase positive. Right, so they include Helicobacter pylori, uh, Vibrocholera, Campylobacter jejuni. Right, and what's peculiar about H. pylori is that it produces ureas. Uh, Vibrocholera grows in alkaline media, and Campylobacter jejuni, uh, this one grows uh, in 40, 42 degrees Celsius. Right, so we are going to cover uh, like this bacteria separately. Right, so first let's talk about Helicobacter pylori right uh, starting with uh, morphology and metabolism uh, this bacteria is curved flagellated which makes it motile right uh, and the kind of flagella is like on the single pore it's a tuft it's more it's more like a tuft okay let me show you uh, right so if you look here you can see uh, flagella you can see four flagella here right uh, it's gram negative, of course, uh, and it's known to have like a uh, triple positive, uh, catalase positive, oxidase positive, and ureas positive. All right. What's the function of this urea? This bacteria produces um, uh, ureas. Ureas will cleave urea to form ammonia. Uh, ammonia is alkaline, so this will create an alkaline environment which helps the H. pylori to survive in the acidic mucosa. You know, in the uh, stomach, there is uh, high acidity, right? So this bacteria colonizes mainly the antrum of the stomach uh, and causes gastritis and peptic ulcer diseases, especially in the duodenum. Uh, this bacteria is also uh, a risk factor for peptic ulcer disease, gastric adenocarcinoma, and mouth lymphomas. All right, uh, now let's talk about the clinical features. All right, this bacteria is very simple. Uh, firstly, you need to know that most people with H. pylori infection will never show any sign or symptoms, right? But if they show symptoms, the symptoms may include uh, an ache or burning pain in the abdomen, abdominal pain when the uh, st uh, stomach is emmed, nausea, vomiting, uh, frequent vaping, bloating, uh, unintentional weight loss, right? So these are the um, signs and symptoms which can occur, right? But I said... Most people, they don't show symptoms. All right. Uh, let's talk about diagnosis of H. pylori. All right. So there are two groups of methods, right? We have non-invasive methods and invasive methods. All right. So non-invasive methods. Uh, the first one is urea breath test, right? So in this breath test, the patient will swallow a pill or liquid or pudding that contains tagged carbon molecules, uh, right? And another non-invasive test is stool tests, right? We do stool antigen test that looks for the what? For the antigens on, in, on the H. pylori, right? Because they are foreign proteins. Uh, another method which we can use also here is uh, stool polymerase chain reaction. Right, that's PCR test. Non-invasive methods. The most important one is upper endoscope examination. Right. So in this one, uh, this will help us to view any irregularities in the upper digestive tract. Uh, and again, another advantage of this test is that it will also help us to take a uh, biopsy, right, tissue samples, right. Okay, so to conclude this video, let's talk about our uh, treatment. All right, so treatment of H. pylori is very easy. All right, so the most common initial treatment is a triple therapy. All right, triple therapy. We are talking about uh, two antibiotics 
and one proton pump inhibitor. The first antibiotic is amoxicillin, right? But if the patient is allergic to penicillin, we give metronidazole. We give metronidazole if the patient is sensitive to um, penicillin. The second drug we use is a macrolide known as clarithromycin. Clarithromycin. Those are the two antibiotics we commonly use. All right. Uh, and then the, the next one to make the, the, the third one is a proton pump inhibitor. All right. Proton pump inhibitors are uh, there a lot. We can use omeprazole, esomeprazole, uh, lanzoprazole. Right. H. pylori, in some cases, it can be a resistant to clarithromycin to this macrolide. Right. So, bismuth based uh, compounds will quadruple the therapy if we are concerned about macrolide resistance. Thank you so much. If you like this video, please, please, please just click the subscribe button. It's for free. It's for free. Thank you so much.